In the world of pop culture, Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, is a character that's known by many due to the popularity of the X-Men franchise, but only beloved by a few due to how poorly he's been adapted in the past. In the X-Men comics, Cyclops has been a symbol of steadfast leadership and unwavering commitment to Professor Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. But the X-Men movies, as good as they are, fail to properly highlight him as a heroic icon. However, the recently released X-Men 97 series fixed this and did justice to Cyclops' character as it portrayed him as a bona fide badass on the battlefield, an awesome leader for the X-Men and an unforgettable character. The narrative arc of X-Men 97 thrust Cyclops into the spotlight as the primary leader following Xavier's presumed death. So today, we're going to talk about this version of Cyclops, exploring his journey as a disciplined leader of the X-Men, Cyclops' evolution as leader of the X-Men. The departure of Professor Xavier leaves a significant void within the X-Men, both in terms of leadership and moral guidance. Cyclops, as Xavier's most trusted lieutenant, naturally steps up to fill this void. This increased responsibility marks a pivotal point in Cyclops' character development. He transitions from executing field strategies to crafting long-term plans that ensure the survival and ethical direction of the X-Men. In the initial episodes of X-Men 97, Cyclops' leadership is immediately put to the test when the X-Men save young mutant Roberta da Costa from the Friends of Humanity, an anti-mutant group wielding Sentinel technology. This mission shows Cyclops' ability to think on his feet, make rapid decisions, and prioritize the safety of his team and the mutants that they protect. His strategic acumen is evident as he coordinates the team to neutralize the threat efficiently while minimizing casualties. And of course, Cyclops showcased his amazing combat prowess during this mission. Of all of the characters in X-Men, Cyclops has one of the most basic mutant abilities, which is shooting concentrated beams of energy from his eyes, which he controls using a special eye gear. Although it's a powerful ability, the previous versions of Cyclops barely look cool using it. They basically used it like a one-trick pony, only haphazardly blasting beams at enemies. But this version of Cyclops showcased an immense level of creativity in using this optic blast. During the rescue mission, Scott showed that the beam couldn't only be used for offense, but for defense as well, as he propelled himself backwards using the blast to prevent the attacks of his opponents from reaching him. And he did this while holding onto Roberto. And then he proceeded to take them down one by one using some amazing offense combinations. Cyclops displayed amazing hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, while using precise and coordinated beams to finish the goons off. And when they turned the tables and took control of the fight using Sentinel technology, Scott showed the humorous side of himself as he teased them by saying no, don't, surrender, as they took his eye gear off before blasting them to hell with an unconcentrated version of his beam. But that's not all. In the same episode, he made the coolest superhero landing of all time. After the X-Men's jet was blasted off the sky, Scott stylishly leapt downwards before firing a massive blast at the ground to mitigate the impact of falling and made an awesome hero pose as he landed. Then he led the team by saying the iconic line, to me, my X-Men, before leading them into victory against Trask and the Sentinel bots. This scene showed how much charisma and aura he has as a leader and this is enhanced by the fact that he also uses awesome catchphrases to pass the orders to his teammates, such as when he said, Give him the forecast. Which was an order for Storm to go wild and destroy their foes using her incredible weather powers. Throughout the story, Cyclops proved to be an indispensable asset in combat for the X-Men, as he performed several impressive feats with his optic blast, such as creating a barricade at the ground to block the restless crowd during the Magneto trial, powering up Bishop during the fight against the Goblin Queen, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bastion's most powerful form, and at one point, even overwhelming him. So Cyclops isn't a fighter that should be looked down on at all, but aside from his combat prowess, he's also a genius strategist. Cyclops' tactical brilliance is a cornerstone of his leadership. His battlefield tactics are unparalleled and his ability to plan long-term strategies sets him apart as a leader. This is particularly highlighted when the X-Men seek out Bolivar Trask, the creator of the Sentinels. Cyclops leads the team to Guy Ritchie Prison, where Jean Grey uses Cerebro to amplify her physical abilities and locate Trask in the Sahara. The mission culminates in the destruction of several Sentinels and a master mod supercomputer showcasing Cyclops' strategic planning and execution. So in terms of ability and charisma, Cyclops is an exceptional leader and heroic figure. But what about his heart? Does he have the heart and emotional resilience to be a hero? The answer is yes. Despite being a badass mutant superhero, Cyclops does indeed have a lot of humanity and we get to see that throughout the series as he was put through a lot of personal turmoil. Despite the immense personal losses Cyclops endures, he remains a pillar of strength for the X-Men. The presumed death of Professor Xavier is a profound blow, yet Cyclops remains composed and resolute. As one of the very first X-Men, Professor Charles Xavier was someone who Scott loved and idolized very much. So naturally, he was heartbroken after Charles died. But instead of running away and having a series of pity parties like many characters would do, he immediately took up the role of the leader of the X-Men because he knew it would benefit the team and the entire world. But of course, 
He did show a bit of his emotional strain, as during the early stages of his leadership of the X-Men, he used to say harsh words to the team and boss them around. It was so bad that Wolverine literally said that him being leader was the worst part of Charles Xavier being dead, but at this point, God's attitude was understandable, because he was facing not only the sorrow of losing his beloved mentor, but also the strain of leading the X-Men while being a partner to pregnant Jean. This was why Jean suggested to him that they leave the X-Men and start up a normal, peaceful life which would allow them to raise their unborn child normally. Despite the fact that it was the best and most logical option for them, Scott wasn't supportive of the idea at first, and this shows how much he's willing to prioritise the safety of the world and Xavier's dream above his own needs. But eventually, he'd see the lie and right as he and Jean were announcing their decision to the rest of the team. He faced another emotional stumbling block, which came in the form of Magneto, who claimed that he was the rightful inheritor of Charles Xavier's school and mission. This reveal shocked everyone in the X-Men, but was particularly daunting on Scott, as he started to wonder if Charles Xavier didn't trust him enough to inherit his legacy. But despite his personal feelings, Cyclops decided to put his family life with Jean on hold and stay on the X-Men in order to keep an eye on Magneto. This was a reasonable decision, because Magneto is the fiercest foe of the X-Men, but Cyclops didn't do this out of pure hate. He knew that there was a possibility of Magneto using the position as a leader of the X-Men to do something evil that deviates from Charles' dream. So this proves once again that Cyclops was completely dedicated to looking out for his teammates and the world as the compassionate and heroic leader that he is. Cyclops' unwavering moral compass is a defining aspect of his character. He upholds Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans, even when faced with immediate threats and pragmatic needs. This commitment to moral integrity is tested repeatedly as he balances the ideals of the X-Men with the harsh realities of their world. No matter how many times the X-Men were attacked by anti-mutant factions or hated on in general, Cyclops remains steadfast in his goal of fulfilling Xavier's dream, as he prioritised the safety of both humans and mutants. Internal Dynamics and Team Management As the leader of the X-Men, Cyclops faces the daunting task of maintaining Xavier's vision while addressing immediate threats. This balance between ideals and realism is a constant struggle. Cyclops must make difficult decisions that often pit the long-term dream of peaceful coexistence against the urgent need to protect mutants from escalating threats. This internal dynamic is highlighted in the aftermath of Xavier's presumed death. Cyclops had to navigate the conflicting ideologies within the team particularly with Magneto's more aggressive stance. The tension between Cyclops' adherence to Xavier's ideals and the pragmatic needs of the team comes to a head during the trial of Magneto. Cyclops supports Magneto's decision to surrender and face justice, emphasising his commitment to lawful and peaceful resolutions, even as he prepares the team to defend against potential threats from the Friends of Humanity. Magneto's presence as a tentative ally brings constant tension to Cyclops' leadership. The dynamic is marked by frequent clashes over core principles and tactics. Magneto's more aggressive approach often challenges Cyclops' more measured and idealistic strategies. Despite these conflicts, Cyclops manages to find common ground with Magneto, leveraging his allies' strength while maintaining their moral high ground. Cyclops idolised Charles Xavier so much that he named his child Charles Nathan Summers. Cyclops' initial distrust and reluctance to accept Magneto's leadership highlights his protective instincts and deep-seated commitment to Xavier's vision. However, Cyclops' ability to navigate these tensions and ultimately collaborate with Magneto demonstrates his adaptability and strategic acumen. Engagement with foes and politicians Cyclops' role as the leader of the X-Men extends beyond battlefield tactics and internal team management. He must also engage with politicians to advocate for mutant rights. This political manoeuvring is fraught with challenges as Cyclops faces prejudice and opposition from anti-mutant factions. His ability to form alliances with sympathetic figures while managing hostility from groups like the Friends of Humanity highlights his growth as a diplomatic leader. A huge political development occurred when the United Nations officially approved Genosha to become a nation for mutants. This was a victory for mutant kind, but the celebration was short-lived as Genosha got massacred, leading to the death of a lot of mutants, including members of the X-Men. Even in such a terrible situation, Cyclops proved to be an exceptional leader as he once again put aside his personal grief and rallied up the X-Men to look for a survivor within the rubble that was once Genosha. He believed that finding even a single survivor would bring hope to the world, particularly to the mutant race. After finding a survivor, Scott finally broke into tears, which was not only him being thankful for the success, but also a way of mourning his lost comrades. This shows how dedicated he is to creating a peaceful world even in the midst of chaos and personal loss. He's also diplomatic in dealing with villains as well, and that's why despite everything done to his comrades and mutants, he never kills or takes personal revenge on his foes. Even after everything Bastion did throughout the series, Cyclops still tried to save him and recruit him to join the X-Men. Personal struggles and relationships Cyclops' personal life, particularly his relationship with Jean Grey, adds another layer of complexity to his character. Most people claim that the romantic relationship is complicated, but for Scott, the complication was next level. After the birth of his son, Nathan, 
He encountered a woman who looks exactly like his lover, Jean Grey. It was later confirmed after a series of tests that she is in fact the real Jean Grey, and the version that he had a child with is a clone. The presence of two versions of Jean, his original love and the clone, created profound emotional turmoil as Scott got confused as to who his actual soulmate was. Soon, things got even more messed up as the Jean clone realised she was under the control of Sinister and turned into an evil witch known as the Goblin Queen. This was an emotional disaster for Cyclops as he not only got romantically taunted by a woman he still loved, but had to fight her to protect the team and his son. Eventually, Clone Jean snapped out of her evil mind and fought alongside Cyclops to protect Nathan from the clutches of Sinister. But things got even more mentally straining for Cyclops after that, as they realised that his son, Nathan, had been infected with a deadly disease that was impossible to cure in their current time period. The team decided the best thing to do was for Bishop to take Nathan to the future and find a cure for him there. But this was when Scott showed his humanity once again. Scott got infuriated by this idea as he claimed that he would never abandon his son the way that his father abandoned him. Eventually, Scott put his feelings aside and went along with the plan since it was their only option to save Nathan. The clone Jean decided to leave the X-Men and take on the name of Madeline Pryor. But it turned out that Scott had some reverse feelings for Madeline, who was the actual mother of his child. So Jean eventually caught him cheating telepathically with Madeline, which led to a big argument between Scott and Jean. During the argument, Scott revealed that he was in love with both versions of Jean, and also doubted if the real Jean still truly loved him. What this proves is that despite being a badass hero and a bold lead for the X-Men, Scott still has human emotional vulnerability and he's not some womanizer or stone cold guy. He holds Jean very close to his heart and that applies to both versions of her. Eventually, they settle and Scott even got a chance to be an awesome father to Nathan who returns from the future as Cable. As for his relationship with the rest of his teammates, Cyclops considers everyone on the X-Men to be family. This is why when Bastion sent an asteroid towards Earth, Cyclops tried to protect the X-Men at the cost of his own life by sending them away so he could deal with the threat on his own. But that's when the team proved to be a united family because they refused and instead fought alongside him and risked their lives to save the world together. Until Daddy Magneto saved everyone. In terms of hero leaders, it doesn't get much better than Cyclops from the X-Men 97 series. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing content.